Hi there, Pokemon fans. I'm so glad you're joining me today. I'm Doris Fenter of Library Arts, and I'm here to show you how you can have fun drawing a winter-themed Pokemon drawing. I have five different characters from the Pokemon series in the picture here to show them playing outside in a fun, wintry scene. We'll be using uh, pencil, markers, color pencils or markers if you have and then for a fun extra effect at the end if you have a little bit of paint and a nail brush I'll show you how you can do a winter white splatter to get the creation of snow on top of your work so I hope you'll join me and I'll see you soon okay let's get started on our Pokemon themed winter snowball drawing or snowball fight drawing. So you're going to need a sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper and you're going to want to have it in a um, landscape or um, horizontal orientation. I would suggest having a pencil and eraser to start so that you can erase anything that you're not happy with. And then I would suggest going over the drawing in the neck before we start adding color in the next step with marker. I'm using both a thin marker for, for little details. So this has an extra fine tip like this. And then I'm gonna use a medium point marker, which will make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. That's why I'm gonna work in marker, but you might wanna work in pencil and then go over to marker. Afterwards for coloring, I will be using color pencils, but you can use crayons, markers, whatever you have. So why don't we go ahead and get started now I have a composition that I've drawn earlier based on the finished drawings. A lot of things going on here. You could certainly change it up, make it a little bit different from this. But I think it's fun because we do have one, two, three, four, five Pokemon characters in the picture, which is really going to make it fun. And um, we will definitely make sure to incorporate them and talk about them a little bit as we go along. Maybe some of your favorites are here, like Pikachu, um, but I hope you have fun working on this with me. Okay, so I'm gonna put my white paper on top of this, and this will give me a, an easy way to uh, better see what, what I'm drawing here. Um, <clears throat> to start with, we're gonna draw the uh, Pokemon characters, and then we're going to build the landscape around it because I find it a lot easier if we do that. So let's start with um, uh, Gardevoir, and that is the sort of very feminine figure down here in the corner. So we're going to start with her head, and she has a kind of rounded head. So we're gonna put kind of a rounded shape on here. Let me just get my marker going. And it comes around to about there. All right, and then you're gonna notice that her hair goes around, couple little spikes, spike down, and then it comes down to form the rest of her face and her neck which is quite narrow, by the way. Now, this is gonna come down to the tip of the neck, and then it's gonna go up like that. And then you're going to have some lines that sort of just give some definition to this head. So we're just gonna put some lines in there. So it looks sort of like a flower, but now we're gonna add the eye, and that's gonna be a short arch like that an eye shape, and then right there is the eye, kind of hiding within the picture a little bit. Now you're also going to have a little more hair coming over here like that, and a little line through it. Now because it's a winter picture, I decided to give her kind of a scarf. So right here around the neck, I put a rounded scar shape. And then I'm just gonna have it kind of flowing out like a fun little scarf is blowing a little bit in the uh, wintry weather. And I'm gonna put a little tassel end on the bottom 
like that. And then I put a few lines to kind of make it a stripe. Now you could put polka dots, you could leave it solid, you could do whatever you want. But we're just gonna keep it simple. Okay, so now we're gonna draw her body. Now I'm making her arms reaching out to a large snowball, because I just think that uh, works better for this. So we're gonna have the first arm's gonna come up like this, reaching out to the snowball, and the other arm is going to be coming up a little hand like that. The uh, snowball is gonna come right around here and back to the circle. So it's just like she's putting the snowball on top of a larger snowball, because you can tell right away where we're going with this is that she's gonna be building a snowman. Uh, so her other arm is gonna come out and we're not gonna see the hand portion because it's gonna be hidden on the other side. Now next comes her skirt. She has this very pretty flowing skirt. So it's gonna come way out there. And then you're gonna do a little bit of a curve, like a little uh, arches all the way back to the other edge of the dress. Come down here and go right to that point. They're almost like little bat wing shapes. Take this line down there, take this one right here, and then just take that one there. And then we just wanna give a little indication of this kind of uh, triangle shape she wears right here. And we also just wanna show that she's kind of wearing this green, um, she's like these green arms. And then we're gonna have one more line, split the skirt and just give a little opening right there, okay? There she is, a little wintry Gardevoir. And we'll make a couple little movement lines to show that she's lifting to put this on top of here. Now next to Gardevoir, we're gonna add a toga pie. Um, <clears throat> and I'm sure you're gonna correct me if I'm saying that wrong. And that's a cute little character who looks like they're coming out of an egg. and. And that, that character is going to be sort of helping Gardevoir with the snowman building. But at the same time, I decided that Togepi would be like uh, juggling some snowballs. So let's start with that. We're going to start with the central triangle on the head. We're going to go out and add two other triangles. I like this character. They're really, it's not as hard as one might think to draw. Now we're going to add... Uh, a little triangle shape there, a little triangle shape there, and that is the top of the head. So bring the ear, the little ear type shapes over just a little, add a little bit of a down shape, and now we're ready to uh, begin the shell. Now the shell is going to be a zigzag across the body but we're not gonna draw the whole shell yet because we wanna get the hands in here. So I have decided to put some mittens over the hands, just to, again to add to kind of the wintry feel. And over here, same thing, I'm putting some little mittens over the hands so that then we can uh, draw the egg shape coming around and up over here. Now we want to have one foot up and that foot is just sort of bouncing up in the air so we're going to put it right here and we're going to put a single line here and a little sort of pad on the bottom of the foot. The other foot is going to be over here sort of leaping out in an excited way as if you know, the uh, to uh, Togepi is sort of, you know, jumping and enthusiastic. So we're gonna put two little eyes and the eyes are kind of excited and looking over at what's happening with the snowman. And then we're gonna have a little happy, jolly mouth. Cause again, 
excitement. And then uh, on top of the shell are some fun little shapes like a triangle within a triangle, a diamond within a diamond. This is, notice you, you, uh, you'll see me using my uh, skinny shape here because um, it's easier to get those details in. A little square type shape, another little triangle shape, okay? Then I just decided for fun, I would have this character juggling snowballs, because I thought that would be kind of fun. And so we can put some movement lines all around here as they're going through the air. Now there's no ground line yet. We're gonna add that after all the characters in. Now next to these two, we're gonna add nine tails, which is a really beautiful looking animal. And we're gonna start with the ears. So we're gonna put one ear right here. And then we're gonna add a second ear right over here. We're gonna curve over from the head to, I mean, sorry, from the ear to make a head. And then we're gonna come out to make a nose and a little bit of a mouth. So let's just bring that ear down. And that mouth is smiling, it's having fun watching everything being built. We're gonna bring a neck down like that. And we're going to um, take this part of the neck down, give a little ruff of fur, and curve it back up right there. Let's add a little eye in there. And the eye is very nice, this pleasant looking creature looking on. Okay. Now let's continue the uh, animal's body coming down like this, adding a little connection to the leg there. We're gonna have one leg come down. The other leg is gonna come down next to it. But you notice how we stop here? Because right here, we're going to make a tail. And the tail is gonna come right back here and stop. Now, we're also gonna be adding all these beautiful fur tail type elements by making these curvy, it looks like a fox tail. And then we're just gonna echo it here. And then here. And then we're gonna go up And there's a little line in that one. So we'll add that line. And then we're gonna go up again. And then we're gonna go up again. It's quite a uh, elegant looking animal. And then we're gonna go up one more time, but this is gonna be lower. And it's gonna come in here like that. Then we have this kind of furry ruff that comes out from the head. It goes out and out and over and out and out and back to the ear. So there is that character. Now I thought it'd be fun if while uh, uh, Gardevoir's building the snowman, maybe Ninetales is holding the head of the snowman. And so the head of the snowman needs a nose, and we're putting that nose sideways, so a sideways triangle, some coal eyes, and a little coal happy mouth. Ready to go on to the snowman. So there we got Already we have three of our characters. Now let's come up here and do our Pikachu. Now Pikachu is really cute. He's got these um, triangular, not triangle, he's like sort of like bunny ears that come out. There's a little curve and then another ear comes out. 
And the, the, the ears are always kind of funny because they're kind of pointing in different directions, I find. Sort of makes Pikachu endearing, doesn't it? So then there's a rounded head. Goes around like that. And we have two eyes. One, two. We have a tiny little nose and a little happy mouth. And typically two little circles like that. And don't forget the chubby little rosy cheeks. So one, two. Now I too decided to give Pikachu a fun scarf that's sort of blowing out here into the wind. So it wraps around his neck, has a little tassel on the end, and that's great. Okay, now we're gonna put his hands up in the air because he's gonna be interacting with Meowth in a minute. And we're going to put one leg coming up with the foot in front, like that. And then we're gonna take the other arm Bring it in, and we're going to curve down, up, and over. And this leg is going to be, this foot, sorry, is going to be right underneath there. Now let's not forget that dramatic tail that he has. It comes out, goes up over here, out there, Straight down, in, down, in, down, and back here. And it has a little bit of a brown section there, just like you have the black up here on the ears. Now, he's also leaping around because it's a very active picture. And now we have Meowth to draw. So one more character, and then we're going to build the landscape around it. So let's go to Meowth. Now, at any time, if this is going too fast for you, it's a great idea for you to just slow down and stop the video and rewatch any part that you need to. So let's start with Meow's head. It's sort of a triangular, rounded head like this, but I didn't go all the way around because there's two, there, well, there's first a rounded triangle shape, and then there's two little spiky, shapes up here, right? Then that's followed by two ears, two triangle ears with a little triangle inner ear. Over here, we're gonna have these sort of like whiskers coming out of the side of the face. So one, two. And then the eyes, we're gonna make them triangular. And we want him looking a little bit over at Pinkachu. So we're gonna put the eyes like that with a nice big mouth and two little cat teeth and a little tongue. So the idea is that Meowth is looking over towards Pikachu. Now we're gonna put one arm. Well, first we're gonna add a scarf again. Here comes the scarf just like on the other ones. On this one, I decided it would be fun to have some circles, polka dots, just to make it fun. And now we're gonna have the arm come right up here near the top of the head with a snowball, because you know what Meowth is about to do. Meowth is about to throw a snowball at Pikachu. And the other arm is coming down and just sort of standing, you know, next to the body, just sort of out there with a little cat belly. And please note that because we're far away, the cat is smaller and should be smaller, right? Because you want to show distance in your picture. You want to show a feeling of distance. 
And let's see, what else did I have on the cat? Just a little triangular shape over here. And now we're ready to start adding the landscape lines. Now the landscape lines are really important because they're gonna show us how to build the picture. So we're gonna start over here and we're actually gonna start with a tree trunk coming up and off the page. And I'm just gonna put some bark shapes in there. Then we're gonna come out from the tree trunk, come down to where Meowth is, right in here. And guess what? We're gonna make a little hill before we get to Pikachu. And then the hill is gonna come down here. Now, the reason why I put that hill there, you'll see in a minute, is because I wanna give it the impression that maybe uh, there's a little snowman that they're building. Now, on the other side of Pikachu, it's gonna come down and we're gonna add another tree right here. We'll just put some simple tree roots here and we're gonna go up, make some craggly little branches because it's winter and there really wouldn't be any leaves on the branches. So you don't wanna put a lot of green leaves if that's not the season for it. And come down here and maybe out here a little bit. And I have moved to my thicker marker now for this part of the drawing. And again, I'm just gonna add some bark shapes to indicate a feeling of bark. So you see how we're just beginning to build what this landscape's gonna look like? It's gonna come down. And guess what? We're gonna put one more tree in the landscape coming up. It's gonna be bigger because it's closer. So the closer the tree, the bigger it will be. And then once again, little bark shapes like this, little random bark shapes, some big, some little, some skinny, some not so skinny. Okay, so that's the back line. I also wanna show one more snowball, again, going through the air. And I'm gonna put a pile of snowballs over here for Pikachu to grab from next to the tree. And right here, we're gonna put a little snowman. Maybe they built it together. Maybe it was already there. I'm gonna put some buttons on it, a little face, and some more snowballs nearby, like that. Now, this is gonna come all the way down here and off the page, like a little path. And all the way down here and off the page. Again, like a little path leading up to the snowman. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is Meowth is gonna want his own pile of snowballs to, so that he has a a fair fight with Pikachu. So we're gonna put a bunch of circles over here by Meowth because you know he's already in fine form throwing snowballs at Pikachu. So we wanna make sure, you know, he's he's ready to go. In fact, he's sort of jumping up. And going back to my fatter marker, we're gonna add another tree coming in from the side over here. Here's the root of the tree. It's gonna come up. It's gonna have some branches again. So this is in the foreground, so it's going to look a little closer than the ones in the background. And then eventually it's gonna go off. And we're just gonna put some bark lines there, again, to give it some texture, a little color variation. And then finally, we're just gonna add some simple cloud forms coming across the sky here. And maybe another one over here, like that. 
and maybe one coming out from the tree here. And let's put a little sun up in the sky. So that pretty much takes care of our drawing. So if you would like to stop the video here, you can now take a marker to trace over your pencil drawing. If you want to add, you know, some fun designs, like look, I'm going to add a little fun design to Pikachu's scarf. Um, I have stripes and polka dots on that one. And you can just sort of have fun adding details. Maybe I want to put a hat on our snowman head so that he'll have a hat when we put it on top of the snowman. And in the next video, we're gonna color in our Pokemon characters. Oh, don't forget that one too. So get your, your picture outlined in black and I will see you shortly. Okay, so we're ready to start adding color and why don't we do Gardevoir first. So I'm going to get a light green and I'm going to use it rather lightly to color in the hair here. And you know, if you wanna play around and have fun and use a different color, there's nothing wrong with that. You can actually, you know, make her have pink hair or yellow hair or brown hair, or whatever, whatever you think. I like to stick with what the characters look like but you can feel free to uh, mix it up a little bit, make it a little more fun, and not feel worried about that. Now I'm just gonna add a little extra green, heavier lines, just like in the original. Color that in, and color this in, because that too is part of the hair. Okay, nice. Now the arms are also green, so we're gonna give a nice little green color to the arms. We're not gonna worry about the uh, scarf right now, but I wanna do something bright there. And then this little insert on the dress is also going to have a little bit of green. Let's color that in, a little bit of green. Now, even though the um, dress looks very, very white, I'm gonna give it a little color by giving it a very pale gray. And then we're gonna add a little bit of that red to that triangle shape. So this is just a very pale gray. And we're really gonna make the snow very colorful, more so than you think. You think the snow would be white, but we're actually gonna add a lot more color in there. And I'm also going to make this gray, but the eye itself has a kind of a reddish pink color. And of course we need that bright red color to color in that little bit of shape. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna continue that red and make a really bright uh, scarf color. I think I'm gonna make it red and um, blue, as soon as I find the blue that I want, I like this turquoise blue. So I'm gonna make it red and blue stripes because I want it to highlight the character a little bit. I don't want the character to fade away so much in the picture. And I think this will draw attention to the character because she is kind of pale in terms of her coloring. And I'm gonna put a little red up here too. So that's why I'm using something kind of bright. And there we go. And I think I'll use a little black for the tassels here. And again, you can make the scarf any color you want, any pattern you want, or leave it off altogether if you want. That's okay too, but you see how we use that example to help us? Now let's move on to nine tails. Now, Nine Tails is a really pretty cream color. So I have this color actually called cream, and I think that's a good uh, color for Nine Tails. I will mix some browns into it too, but for now, I'm gonna start with the cream. There's another ear. The body is also cream, but I'm gonna use a darker brown just to accent 
some of the details like in the fur here. So I'm gonna take this color. I'm just gonna add a little bit on top to sort of emphasize some variation there and also inside of the ear. Now over here is some more, sort of like a, like a mane, like a horse's mane coming off of nine tails. So I'm gonna get that in there with just a little, a little bit of color, not too much going in there. Cause I like the way color pencils can blend and layer. Okay, for the tail, I'm gonna put a lot of that cream color. Not sure really what that is, if, if it's a tail or not. Maybe you think of it as something totally different. Maybe it's just fur, but I like it. And I definitely want it to stand out. Like that. But again, I'm gonna use like for the tip of the tail, there's some brown here and here. And then I'm just going to use a darker gray to show this part, this inner part that's a little bit darker. Just a little bit of gray, not much. Yeah, showing off a little bit of gray there, here, here, and here. And then maybe a little bit of that brown again, just a little bit here and there. And you can use as much or as little as you want. It's really up to you. But it does give a little bit more dimension and that is basically nine tails. And nine tails also has a pink colored eye. So there you go. There's nine tails. Now let's move on to Pikachu. Oh nope, let's do uh, Togepi. Togepi. And that is going to be similar to Pikachu, so we're going to keep some of the similar colors out. We're going to definitely start with some nice, bright yellow. And get that in there. And the feet have a nice, bright yellow. Helps those to stand out. Oops. Missed a little bit up here in the head. Go back and fix that. Now, um, I'm going to do the same pale gray I used on uh, the other character, Gardevoir, because I think that white is not really a true white. It's more like a grayish white. So any shapes with openings, I'm just going to fill those in with the gray in the opening and then use the brighter color to color in the shape. So I see a really pretty bright red. So I have a nice red here. Actually, I have two reds. I wonder which, this one looks a little closer, so I'll do this one. Okay, so we have a little red diamond shape here and over here and over here followed by a really pretty bright blue here, uh, here, and here. We'll put a little pink in the mouth and a little bit of this red-brown behind it. And then I really like that red on the uh, shell. So I'm gonna give red gloves to again, pop out the color like that. And I just noticed I left a couple lines off. There's usually a line here and a line there. So added it on. So now we have one, two, three, 
of the Pokemon characters colored. Now let's go over to this one and let's do Pikachu. So Pikachu is also a nice bright yellow. And this is good because when we do this background snow scene, we're gonna really want these bright colors standing out, letting the characters stand out against uh, the snow, which I think you're gonna find very interesting when I show you how we're gonna color that in. Got a yellow ear, a yellow face. Of course, those fun, playful cheeks, which we'll do in a moment. We have a black tips on the ears and here, and actually the eyes are dark with little white shapes. And cherubic red cheeks and a little red mouth. Now, in terms of the tail, we need to make sure we get that colored in, nice and bright yellow. But at the base, sort of like on nine tails, we have another color coming in, a kind of a brown color. We're gonna get that brown again, and we're just gonna give it a little bit of treatment. So I'm thinking because of all the uh, colors we have in Pikachu, we want to do something fun for the scarf. Maybe bring some greens in there. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do green on this side. It's sort of a nod to Gardevoir. And I think I'll do a little orange on the other side. Again, just bright, bright and playful to make it really stand out nicely. All right, so there's Pikachu. Now we're gonna go on to Meowth. He's a cute one, really cute. Now we're gonna need a light, light, beigey color for Meowth. And I know I have one here, where did I put it? Just looking at it a moment ago. I, oh, here it is. So we want to choose a nice beige. I could almost put that cream on top, and I might. I'm going to first put the cream on the tail, on the arms. Like this. Even the face is going to be very, very pale. But don't worry, we'll bring the other colors out. And we'll take that little creamy color and we'll add some cream on top of it to make it even more like the real color of Meowth. And let's not forget, we're gonna put those brown feet in. So we have some little brown feet. tannish feet. We have a little bit of tan on the tail. And then we have some black ears with a little bit of brown inside. We need the, the tan again here. Put a little brown on it and a couple little lines. So I'm just gonna do that with a color pencil. We have uh, two eyes here. We definitely need to brighten up his scarf. So I'm gonna make it red, I think, with yellow polka dots. So we're gonna make it red around the polka dots. And yellow inside. Maybe you want yours to be purple. I just want something bright 
to stand out. So here's the yellow polka dots inside the red. So I like that. I think that looks pretty good. Oh, I think I forgot to color these little whiskers. Yeah, there we go. So we have just completed your four, five Pokemon characters. In the next film, we're going to start to tackle the snow and the snowballs, okay? Which I think you'll really like because we're going to do something different that you won't really expect for a snow color. See you in a minute. Okay, so now we're ready to turn our attention to the snowy background. We'll do the trees in the sky afterwards. Now, I'm getting a lot of my interest for the snow from this book, Snowman at Night, that has some beautiful illustrations for snow. And you might notice all the beautiful blues, purples, pinks, and greens, and even a little bit of yellow. And we're gonna use those tones or that color palette to actually uh, color in our picture today using those beautiful colors that you don't always equate with uh, snow. And I'm gonna tell you that you'll be amazed how beautiful your snow is going to look by doing that. So we're gonna just lightly put down uh, this light blue because we don't wanna be too heavy handed with this but we do want to give a light blue feeling to the snow all around our Pokemon characters. So don't always get caught up with the idea that snow needs to look white because truthfully, depending on what time of day you're looking at it, snow can change color based on the sky, the moon, the sun, touching it and really giving us a really pretty different impression of the snow far from being basic white. So I'm using a really pretty soft blue to just put the first layer of color down. Then we're going to come back and we're going to build some other colors on top. But we're just going to start with and since the, the snowballs are gonna be blue too, I'm not gonna worry about covering those up because we definitely want a little blueness in the snowballs. So I'm just gonna lightly, as I said, come in here, give the uh, snow a blue effect. And then we will come back and add some details to that blue. And look at already how pretty it looks with the uh, light blue town tones around our Pokemon figures. And once we get it all blocked in, you will see how great it looks. Here, around nine tails, all the way into the corner. And as you get to the edges, by the way, it's a good idea to just get yourself an extra sheet of paper and use it as just a way to go off the paper without getting onto your tabletop, without getting onto your desk. And also consider using the side of the pencil like I'm doing here because you don't need to use the tip when you're doing big areas. Turn your paper to make it easier to get into different areas. And again, don't worry about going off the paper. That's natural to be expected and is a good thing to do. Now we do have this path here and I think I'm gonna make it a little darker. So it kind of makes that path stand out. And it's gonna frame in 
uh, Gardevoir very nicely too, making her stand out more. Remember, she's got that really light gray dress. Well, the blue up next to it is gonna make that dress stand out more. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit darker for that reason. I'll get to those snowballs in a minute because we definitely want to add color to the uh, snowman here. But we're going to introduce some more colors beyond the blue here. So let's just get started with this. Come over here. Around the snowball. Oh, this is getting worn down, that's for sure. That's all right. I will be able to sharpen that up in a minute. Okay, so that just makes the path stand out a little bit, right? Now, I also want to bring some uh, pretty yellows into our picture so we can have some pretty yellows. And no, it's not like the dog that came by and made the yellow snow. Don't worry about that. We're just adding a little bit of color within the blue. So we're just doing a light layer there. And then we're going to um, go into our snowballs now. And now believe it or not, I'm gonna start with the light layer of yellow. And then I'm gonna bring that blue that we were using before also into the snowballs. So we have one snowball here. We're gonna bring a tiny bit of green in there. And really keep it very, very pretty and light and bright. Like this, and I do have to get uh, the snow over here and I'll do that in a minute. green. Notice I'm using a little scribble technique to color this in. I don't want it to be dark, but I don't want it to be light either. And let's make that snowman's face really stand out on top of Ninetales' tail. You know, I didn't even count to see if I did nine tails on nine tails. That would have been funny. I should have probably done that. There. Um, we can also bring out some color in these snowballs that are being juggled. Put a little yellow in there to brighten it up. And of course, you can use some white. And if you want to use leave them white, you certainly can. I'm going to add some dark gray to the hat. Darken up the mouth a little bit. And maybe just some regular black to the top of the hat. All right, so we need to get some more snow over here. Remember, I'm just going to go right off the page all the way to the corner. I want to make sure the whole picture is covered. There we go. And again, I can add a little green here. A little green over here. Not a lot. Keeping it very light. I don't want to get too much in there, but I do want to get a little bit. And it's kind of fun to take some blue and to put it underneath your characters to give them a little shadow. Like Ninetales is sitting here, let's give them a little shadow. Let's give a little shadow underneath the foot here, underneath this snow ball for the snowman, underneath 
Gardevoir. Let's make it a little dark where they're walking, standing underneath Pikachu here. A little shadow, not too heavy underneath Meowth. Just a little extra shadow, blending it outwards. There. And then I'm going to go up here and add just a little bit of color to the snowman that was built up here and the snowballs so that they stand out in a kind of playful way. And these snowballs and these snowballs and the one sailing through the air, of course. I'm going to go back and add a little blue on there and maybe a bit of that green too, to really make those stand out. Here comes the green. And the green actually gives it a nice little highlight to make them stand out beautifully. So remember, when you're doing this project, feel free to stop the video, go back and rewatch something that you missed, you go, whoa, I, I, I didn't see that. I gotta, I need more time to work on that. That's perfectly okay to do that. Not a problem. And maybe a little bit more on here where the shadow would be. Okay. Now I think we're ready to almost move on to um, the next step. But I feel like I didn't give Meowth all of his colors, so I'm just gonna go in here and do that real quick. But yes, I think we're ready to go on to the trees and the sky. And so you catch up on your picture you color in your snow and we'll be back shortly. All right, now is a good time to turn our attention to the trees and we're definitely gonna go with the earth tones on the trees. Um, and then we are gonna turn our attention to the sky. So for the trees, I like to use a combination of browns. Like I'll start lightly filling in the tree, maybe with a little bit of a, a medium brown. And I like to go in and I like to add maybe a darker brown. Because when I look at trees, I don't see them as one color. I might even want to bring in, say, some grays and put in some darker grays. Because I definitely see a lot of trees that have a gray tone to the bark. And again, back to some lighter browns. So I like to really make the trees feel interesting and not all of one color. And then these shapes that I'm sort of going around right now, we're gonna add a brownish red tone to that in just a moment. Let's just get the basic tree shape, and you don't have to be fussy with this. You just wanna fill in the shape, but use a nice layer of colors so you can get some variation in the tree itself, not just brown as a tree. Make it brown, gray, buttery brown, yellow brown. And now I'm going to come in for a little contrast with the nice red bark. Just like that. Now I'm going to do the tree up here. I'm going to do it in a similar way. Maybe make it a little bit lighter because when things go back farther in the distance, they're not going to be quite as dark and bold. So maybe when I do the browns here, I don't really have the grays in it and I don't use that heavier brown. I just want to use enough brown to get it blocked in and then use, whoops, a little of the red to bring out. You see how this one's bolder and that one's fading a little bit. Same thing over here. I'm going to fill it in lightly and I'm even going to go over those round shapes because I know that I'm going to fill them in in a minute with the redder color and I'll go heavier with that. 
but I can block it in quickly with this mid-tone brown and then I can go back in and build up with some darker brown and then uh, mid-tone brown and then eventually go back in with the reddish brown. So maybe I'll bring in here and there a little bit of the darker tones. Doesn't have to be all over. It can just be wherever you want to add it. So a little bit here, a little down here, maybe a little darker at the roots. Like that, and a little darker up here. Now I'm gonna come in with the red. And this is where I can see right on top of the browns, I can bring out the sort of bark shapes. And this is one where I could also go in with the gray and I could add a few gray tones in the picture. Because again, this is closer to it, so it's gonna be darker and bolder than the ones that are farther away. Okay, and so then again, the one that's farther away, we're gonna go lighter. We're not gonna go quite as dark. We want it to fade into the background just a little bit to show that it's farther away from us. It's not gonna be as dark and apparent as the other trees are. So nice and light, block it in. here again nice bringing the darker brown in but I'm keeping it very light not too heavy I don't want to go there I want to keep it on the lighter side but I also want to make sure the tree feels like I've taken the time and care to do my best job Again, go back in with the red, bringing out the, the bark texture. Yeah, those are nice. And before I go uh, to the next video, I'm just gonna find a nice golden yellow to make a nice sun up here. I didn't wanna make it the same yellow as Pikachu and this character down here. I decided to just kinda make it a golden yellow. Okay, in the next video, we're going to talk about the sky and the clouds, and we'll finish up our drawing. See you in a minute. Okay, so we're back to start finishing up our picture. And I don't want to put the sky in a blue tone because I feel like that will take away from the snow. So I'm gonna use a light purple to fill in the sky and just put it down very, very lightly. And if it gets into the clouds a little bit, that's okay. Just trying to give a little bit of a purpley feeling to the picture without it going on too heavy. I also have this other purple tone that's very pretty too. So I'm probably mix a little bit of both and again, I'm just gonna put it down, not worrying too much if it somehow gets into my clouds because my clouds may have some of that color in it afterwards. Using the side of my pencil to make the colors go down easily Like this, like this. There. And you want a little bit of a contrast. You don't want to have the sky the same exact color as, as I said, as your snow. You want a little variety. 
a little bit of color. I'm probably going to put a little pink in here along with the purple. And I'm keeping it very light intentionally because I don't want to over dramatize the sky. So there we have a nice pretty pink. We're going to go in and add some of this very beautiful blue. So a little bit of blue on top, but not enough to really take away from the pretty purples that we just put down. Just a little bit, very lightly applied, like a layer, right on top. Like this, very, very lightly. Yeah. Now for the clouds, I think I'm gonna get in here with some pink. And a little bit of blue because then you kind of get a pretty purpley color. I don't want to overdo it. Don't want to overdo it. And maybe a little white. Because white, you can still add white and brighten things up, especially like in a cloud shape. You might want to brighten it up a little bit so that the clouds are viewable. It's also going to blend the other colors together. So then you're going to end up with, and I can put a little bit of white in these uh, snowman face and other areas, just again to brighten it up and make those really nice details come out. And Pretty much, there you go. But there is one special thing we're going to add to this. So this is an option, but it's a really fun option. I'm gonna show you a little splatter paint effect that we can put over your drawing. That will be in the next video. You're gonna need some white paint, a toothbrush, or a nail brush, and that's it. You don't need a water cup for paint or anything like that. And we're going to give a little snow splatter over the whole scene, and that will finish up our picture. So I'll see you in a minute. Get your supplies together. Okay, for this last step, you're going to notice that I have put some gloves on my hands, but you don't have to. This is one of the funnest parts of this project. I have here a sheet of foil with a little white paint, just tempera, acrylic. This is just a nail brush that I actually use for paint, so I'm not really using it for my nails, but you can use an old toothbrush too. And what you're gonna do is just dip your brush or your nail brush into the paint so that you get a little bit of that white paint on the bristles. You wanna do it bristle side up and use your hand and pretend you're stroking a dog or a cat's back. And then you're just going to, ah, that's better. Give it a little snow splatter. It's really fun. It's not really that messy, although you'll notice that I put some uh, paper towels on my table to protect my work. But it just gives it that fun little wintry feel. Put a little more on Pikachu and Meow. And it really just sets the mood for a winter scene. And there you go. You have a winter-themed Pokemon fun in the snow picture featuring one, two, three, four, five Pokemon characters. I hope you enjoy doing this project with me. If you need more time, of course, you can continue after we're over here. But it was so much working, fun working with you today, and I hope that I can see you again in the future. So stay well and stay creative. This is Doris Venter of Library Arts. Thank you for joining me today.